In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were, with, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. One sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And now I'm going to go down to verse 16. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass. Everybody say, it shall come to pass. Say it again. It shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon and the blood, before the coming of the great notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many of y'all heard of the revival that had been going on in, what is it, Kentucky, at Asbury University? Asbury University, you've heard of that revival. Well, it's been going on for 10 days, and then the, I think the dean of students made the announcement that they were closing it down. Did you hear about that? How many of y'all heard that, that they're closing it down? Huh? You can only watch it online. Have you seen it online? I did cry. But it's really a spawning. It's a spawning of revival that goes from one place to the other. It's something that the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost does these things. I, I'm not going to judge whether it was right or wrong for them to shut it down. I just find it interesting. Because the way revival starts, revival you cannot start purposefully. You can put the names. I like doing that. It's a good promotion, revival, avivamiento, awakening on all the bulletins and all that. It's good because it says something. It says we're going to revive you. And there's some people that need to be revived, a shaking. Revive comes from the word vive. Vive is living, alive. Revive means you were living and then you died and you were revived. Revival comes that those who were alive died and were revived. A revival is you were on fire for God, you got cold, the revival fire came back and fanned the flames of revival, that's how you say it, and you become alive again, charged up. You, you found yourself stale and now you're excited again. That's what revival is. Awakening is different. Awakening is you're asleep. There's a lot of people in churches that are asleep. Many of us were asleep. Uh, literal and figuratively asleep. <laughs> some fall asleep, thus we have nice strong coffee. <laughs> but some fall asleep spiritually. They get stuck in the mundane, the the Wednesday service, the Sunday service, they know what time this is going to start and what this is going to start and when this is going to end and all that. And, and I will say this, that if you ever say to yourself, let's say tonight at 7 o'clock, that's okay, we got plenty of time. You know they got five minutes of announcements. They're going to have... 20 minutes worth of worship. Pastor will be up at about 7.25. I don't have to be there at 7. I'll show up at 7.20 or 7.25. I don't need to be there on time. I don't need to be there early. Chances are, you're falling asleep. 
you're getting still. There's no excitement to it. Because when I go to the movies and I buy a ticket and I've invested now $14, which used to be much cheaper. Maybe you can go to some of the matinees that are cheaper, but I almost spent $14. I want to get there early enough to go get my popcorn. I want to get my soda and a good seat if I didn't get a reserve seat, which I'd rather get a reserve seat all the time. And let me tell you something. Tell me if you're like this too. I like watching the previews, so I'm going to show up real early. Am I right now? I want to get there for the previews. I want to know what's going on. But, but wait a minute. I saw the previews last time. I saw the previews on TV. I see the previews online. But ain't nothing like seeing the previews in person. So we show up on time. Early. You're excited. Now, I'm a different pastor than you've ever seen. I promise you that. I promised it to you the first time you laid eyes on me. And I say it to you and I say it to you all the time because I don't judge you by that. I just want you to gauge where you are because I can't force revival in this place. I can't force revival on you. I can't force revival on there. And no leader, no leader can do it. I'm going to show you this in the scripture. No apostle, no prophet, no evangelist, no pastor, no teacher can spawn real revival. What went on in Asbury? If you listen to the video of the first message when it all started, it's fairly mundane. Good word. Got to pay attention to it. Monotoned. Nothing exciting that some people are used to when you talk about revival, right? When you listen to some of the worship, you can hear the, the notes out of key and the voice out of key and all. But yet, by the end of the service, nobody wanted to leave. Huh. And then they stayed. And then they said, let's go back. And they didn't want to leave. And the lights went off and some people said, I'll sleep here. Ten days. 50,000 visitors from around the country arrived to a city that only has 6,000 people living in it. In 10 days, 50,000 people arrived to the city that only had 6,000 people as populated inside that city. Not enough hotels, not enough restaurants, not enough uh, water, not enough parks, not enough places to sleep, not enough places to stay. And if you are, if they are like the woke community of today, they would become, what do you mean you don't have a hotel room? What do you mean there's not a seat for it? What do you mean I got an hour and a half wait at McDonald's? That's what was going on. One of the reasons why they shut it down, the city couldn't handle the crowd. Couldn't handle the crowd. People sleeping. They couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't close the doors because there were people sleeping on the floor, sleeping on the pews, passing out, falling out under the power of the Holy Ghost, and then staying there. I've been guilty of that one time. I fell out under the power of God in a revival in Louisiana, and man, it was powerful. We had three services a day, seven days straight, about the fourth or fifth day, the Spirit of God hit me. I fell out under the power. I was somewhere on the stage. I was just worshiping God, and I just rolled out. And then as I was feeling God's presence, I started hearing this guy snoring next to me. And I'm like, what is going on with this guy snoring? He's getting me out of the spirit. It feels so good. I'm in heaven. And he's snoring. Oh. I'm like, what is he snoring? So I finally came to myself and I opened up my eyes. On this side of the platform was a grand piano, not a baby grand, a grand piano with flowers, you know, hiding the bottom part of the grand piano so that way the TV camera doesn't pick up the piano player's legs, right? And on the bottom, underneath the grand piano, there was I all by myself with the lights turned off and the person that was snoring was me. I was the one snoring. You ask my wife, she'll tell you about it. I was under the piano. They had turned the lights off of the church. Everybody was already gone. I figured the alarm had been set. 
There wasn't a soul in the room. It's like if I turn all these lights off right now, that's the way it was. And I said, oh my God, they left me in there. They couldn't see me. I was under the piano. What did they do? I thought immediately I was going to get arrested. The cops were going to show up. An alarm was going to go off. Getting arrested for revival. I'm like, what? I didn't know what time it was. I didn't. True story. So I went walking around this big old church. All the lights down the hallway off. And I'm going down this hallway, that hallway. Then suddenly I turn one way and I see light coming out of a doorway at the end of this long hallway. And I hear Pastor Lisa laughing. <laughs> and I said, I said, okay, my wife is still here. And I get over there and the preacher, the preacher's wife and my wife and the pastor of the church were all in the back and they were just waiting for me to get up. <laughs> they were eating. Yeah, they were eating. I think y'all were in the kitchen of the, it's like being in the kitchen over here and said, well, we might as well eat. That boy won't wake up. I mean, it was, when you ever hear me say we lived in revival, I'm talking about lived in revival. And there was no preacher, there was no thing that stirred it or anything. It was something that God did. And I want to show you what's in this word. And we're going to go through a couple of pictures that I want to share with you in a little bit. But it says right here in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says, It shall come to pass in the last days. The word last days means the end of time or end of days. It Movies have made us think that the world is coming to an end, and that's not what that says. Last days is, uh, is uh, it's like the last of the era. There's going to be a transformation that takes place. We've had different eras that have changed. You know, we've had the iron and the brass, and we had the electronic age. Now, then the information age, and now we're, we're on this AI age, artificial intelligence age. You know, all these ages allow us to evolve in different ways. That's what it means right here on the last days. It shall come to pass that this thing's about to roll up when Jesus comes. How many of y'all know Jesus is coming? How many of y'all are excited about Jesus coming? Yeah. Jesus is coming. And he says, it shall come to pass in the last days. Watch what it says. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. All flesh will receive the spirit, capital S, the Holy Ghost, all flesh. Then it says right here, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your manservants and on my, man, on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. There's a category that's left out in this list. Let's look at it. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on manservants and on maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. There's a, there's a generation here that's missing. This generation of the generations of the leaders or the movers or shakers of the, of the, of the era. He says, your sons and your daughters will do this. Your children are going to do that. Your old people are going to do this. But what about you? Come on now. What about you? He said, he gave, he gave direction of everybody except the, except the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Except the president, the governor. Except the city official, the leaders. Hear me now. I want, I want you to catch something where we're going with this. What spawns revival is not a leader that stands up and says, let's have revival. What spawns revival are you that says, I am hungry for revival. I'm, hung, I'm hungry for revival. And then you just get down and you have revival right there. There's a statement that you'll hear my wife and I say, we live in revival we, we, live in, we, we live in revival. We were revived. And when, when you get to know us, you, you recognize there's something different. I accept that. There's some, I'm not the man that who Clark Ortiz was. Something happened to me. And like in a twinkling of an eye, I was converted and changed to this person that I am right now. The person that I am right now. I'm, I'm very vocal. I'm outspoken. I'm very aggressive. I think of nothing but big stuff. I don't think of small things. I, I focus on... on 
on being able to reach out a world and touch a life and stir everybody to do the same. I, I, when I read the scriptures, I see it with a different insight and revelation and understanding. There's something totally different there because we live in revival. And when you jump into this, you'll see what's going on. You're in revival. You too are in revival. We're watching revival. We're seeing the revival fire fans fanning the flames that are inside you. you this young lady, this couple sitting in the back, very quiet and all that. And then one day she wants to, she kind of makes her way to the front, wants to sing. And I'm like, of all the people that I would guess that would say, I didn't even know you sang. And so I, can I, can I just not, I have to be used. That's, that's really what you were saying. That, that's revival. Hey, I can sing brand new couple who you brought brand new couple. Hey, I want to sing. And my wife goes, man, you got to hear them sing. Wow. That's, that's what revival does. Uh, Joey over there just stirred up. It's like he can't stop the guy. He's got podcast after podcast interviewing everybody. Nobody can stop him. I don't know. He's got caffeine in his veins or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's revival. My wrestling, this guy right here wrestled, was going to a different church, very respectful and rightfully so, going to a different church, and just every once in a while, he didn't know who I was. I came to the church over here to pray in the prayer garden. And every once in a while, he'd show up. I met him online on Facebook. We were like on a dating site. Just kidding, Facebook. <laughs> he had a ministry Facebook page. And, and I said, check this guy. I think it was like ministering Uber or something like that. Or you were ministering to Uber. Church on Wheels. That's what it was on, on Facebook. Church on Wheels. I messaged him and then... And then one day he shows up and he says, hey, pastor. And he introduced himself. I've been wanting to meet you. And, and he gave an offering to the ministry. And he's and very simple. Say, I go to another church. I'm faithful to that church. That, hey, praise the Lord. I just want to be your friend. And all this time, keep coming, coming, coming. And then when it came time where he just, he couldn't take it anymore. That God was calling him over here. He had a conversation with his pastor. Was released and said, pastor, I believe that God wants me to be over here and serve with you. And he's here. And God's done a lot of stuff with me. He's even looking younger. It's healing your face, your knees, healing, healing your body, giving you strength, restore, restoring your mind, making you a professional. That's what God is doing. God's doing this. This couple over here sitting in the back showing up to church every once in a while. Can I say that? And then suddenly they just start getting this fire turned on. And then, then the, the, your, your wife, where is she? She's in the back busy working. She's in the, she, she came... She came one day, the first time I saw her, she just wanted to see what was going on with praise and worship because Analea was starting praise and worship and that was a good mama. She says, I'm going to check out what's going on. She came very quiet with her phone, but I knew she was studying us. I liked that. I said, okay, we're going to get to know. And then next thing you know, they moved from where you guys are sitting. I saw them move up too. Then move up another one and then boom right there. And then this young man right here says, I don't even want to go to work. I just want to be around Pastor Clark. I want to come to Center Church. I don't even want to leave. He shows up in the office with his backpack and everything, ready to work. Here. Hallelujah. What can I do? I said, okay, start making phone calls. I get him. Make phone calls. That's the fire of revival. Dear Saint here says, I, 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 she just walks right up to me. I don't know if it was the first time you came or what time it was you came. It was the first time I remember laying eyes on you when you came up to me and said, Pastor, I believe this is where I'm supposed to be. I have my children. Was that, was that the first time you were here? Second time. Second time she was here, walks right up to me and says, this is where, this is where I'm going to be. This is going to be my church. I just, and you could see just the precious, faithful love and worship with banners power and their little girls ministering and praying. That's revival. That's, that's where revival comes. That's, that's where it comes. It comes, comes from the people. These things that you're doing out in the park, that's where revival comes. Those people, they get down in their face and that's where revival comes. That where, that's where revival comes. It comes, from the, it comes from the seats. It doesn't come from the pulpit. The pulpit is just to set the table. Set the table. If you were here when I talked that message, you got to set the table. The table has to be set so that way all you have to do is come and eat. And so that way you can enjoy the revival. That's what happens. So here in the scripture, in Acts chapter 1, I'm going to move a little bit past one eight. I'm sorry. Acts chapter 1, in verse 4, 
It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded, this is Jesus commanded them not to part from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at that time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up on you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Now, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up. Watch what happened. He was taken up. And a cloud received him. A cloud received him. This is a UAP of the New Testament. Or UFO, you know what? You've been, you've been seeing them shooting down these balloons or unidentified items or whatever. This is... I mean, they've never seen Jesus fly. They saw Jesus walk through a wall. They saw Jesus get crucified and raised from the dead. So they're ready to receive it. Look, you see a person raised from the dead. After you see him die, you're going to believe everything that that person says. Whether you denied it before, you're going to believe it then. And so they're out there. And then suddenly Jesus ascends. And a cloud received him. Come on now. Let's take the religious mindset out of this statement. Look. And while they looked steadfastly to heaven, he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels. Who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner. So you saw him go into heaven. The same way you saw him go into heaven is the same way he's coming back. They saw a cloud receive him. He's coming back in the clouds. Are you hearing me? In the last days, this is what's going to happen. There's things that are taking place right now that science can't answer, no government office can't answer. There's things that are taking place that no politician has figured it out. They've kept it secret and they can't keep it secret anymore and it's all coming out there. What in the world is happening? Can I tell you, angelic visitations are real. Anybody here ever seen an angel? Let me see your hand, thank you, sweetheart. Anybody else, who else has seen an angel? I've seen an angel at the age of 12, 12. I saw it again, 13, at 14, I've seen, angels, I've seen angels as an adult with my wife. I've seen angels, and they're real, they're real. And you just can't say that to everybody because some people are going to think you're weird. That's right, he just, just the other day, he saw his car pass through another car. He called me up and said, Pastor, I'm going to tell you what just happened to me. These are supernatural events. These are things that actually take place that will make you think what in the world's going on. That's what supernatural means. It's not natural. <laughs> so revival. Revival comes from the kids. Revival's coming from, from those that are hungry for revival. The revival can, revival, it's about you being revived. It's not, not about the church. I don't know how many times... As a pastor, people pointed to the pulpit and said, oh, until they get this fixed, there's no revival. Until they get that, let me tell you, until the people get on their face on the floor, there ain't nothing going to get fixed. <laughs> Hello. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on with the leadership, because according to the scripture, it does not, not about the leadership. Revival is about you and God. Yes. You and God. All the leadership is there is to be servant. What did I say? Come on, servants. Servant, you remember what I said, every, every, all my leaders, remember, remember, I want you all to know this. All my leaders, I go through this, this statement and said, this is the way we serve. In corporate community, it's like a pyramid. You got the CEO or president on top. Then you got the assistant and you got the vice president. You got the directors and all down in this pyramid form. And you got your clients all the way down on the bottom, right? And then you just kind of work your way up. That's how they say it. You work your way up, Right. I said, but in this church, we're not going to do that. From day one, talking to leadership, I said, we're not going to do that. You see this pyramid? We're going to reverse this pyramid. The Bible says in order to be great in the kingdom, you must become the least. I said, that person down on the bottom, that's the responsibility I'm willing to take. 
I'll carry it. I'll do whatever it takes. Make sure everybody has lights. Make sure there's a room. Make sure there's air conditioning. And how am I going to do it? Through organization and infrastructure, leadership, understanding how the word works and understanding how God will bless people if they all come together in one accord and teaching the word and preparing you. Just getting you prepared so that way one day you'll burn your forehead on the rug. Come on. I'm telling you, when you've come through revival and you see these things that are going on in Ashbury, you say you can't help but stop. Ashbury University, for those of you who may not have known what, what's going on with Ashbury, Ashbury University, they just had a, they were having their regular weekly meetings or whatever meetings that they had. And then suddenly the people were so hungry, they said they're not going to leave. And then, then the word got out and CNN even promoted it. And Fox News started talking about what's going on. You got all these kids, nobody wants to leave. All they want to do is come and pray. That's all they want to do. There's no famous preacher, no famous musician. a matter of fact, there's been famous musicians and preachers that I know of that have gone there thinking that when they walk in there, they're going to go and carry the revival with them. Uh-uh. God shut that whole thing down. They, they left with their tail between their legs. And they said, this is something they had never seen before. So then when the, when the chancellor stood up and says, we're going to shut this down, it's only going to be online, he said something that I... I want you to go back and listen to the video of his speech. He made, he said, we're going to open up our sanctuary to two categories. They're going to broadcast it online, but there's only two categories that they're going to open up their sanctuary to. Are you ready for this? Gen Alpha, Gen Alpha, Generation Alpha, and the Millennials. Who are they? Gen Alpha and the Millennials. The Millennials are the college students that are there and those that are going into the career, still in their 20s. Gen Alpha are those that are born 2010. I said, oh my God, that's a 13 year old right now. As old as a 13 year old. Those that were born from 2000, but uh, after 2010 is Generation Alpha. I said, I like that Gen Alpha. (laughs) Just the name itself, I like that. I said, oh, he's... He's not shutting down revival. He's actually setting it up without even realizing it. He says, you know what he did? He just carved out the Gen Xers. You know, we troublemakers. Come on, how many Gen Xers do we have here today? But come on, you got Gen Xers, Generation X. You're a Gen X. Are you Gen X or a yuppie? I don't know. You don't know what they, the the dates? Oh my gosh, y'all need to Google more. Okay, Gen X are those that are born from Gen X or 65 to uh, 1965, that's me, 1965 to 1984. Uh, 80, 80, You're a baby boomer. 46 to 64. That's right, 46 to 64 is a baby boomer. Baby boomer. How many baby boomers are there here? 46 to 64, right? Baby boomer. No, no, my wife is excluded because she's adopted by my age. I know he just doesn't, he doesn't know what he's saying. I know, honey, I'll take care of him. Go sit and put your nose on the wall, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she, no, no, she's covered under my age. <laughs> she married my age. <laughs> oh, you're mean now. <laughs> so watch this. Okay, so that's, that's baby boomers. The Gen X is, is uh, 65 to, uh, to 84. Huh? Those are Gen Xers. And then, so you're a Gen Xer. How many Gen Xers? Let me see your hand. Gen Xers. That's you, you Gen Xers. Gen Xers are parents into grandparents. That's who they are. Gen X. Parents into gen, grandparents. And then grandparents are the first one. Grandparents into great grandparents. So they carved them out. And they carved them out only the millennials. The millennials, those that were born, what was it, 1980? I think it's 1988 all the way up to whatever, two, 2010 or something. Those are the, the, the millennials. That's what they're called, millennial age group. That's right, you're okay. No, you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping you hidden. <laughs> Remember, you're, I don't know who's older, but you're adopted to the younger. That's what I tell my wife. I, I give everybody my wife's age when they ask me how old I am. So I get coupons and tickets and discounts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, sometimes it works, sometimes it works. Now I caught up. I caught up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
She's going to punish me. Church is over. <laughs> Here's what they said. Here's what they said. They said, we're, we're only going to leave it for this generation. When I heard that, I said, oh, my God, that's just young generation. That, that's the young generation. That's so perfect. This is a revival that's being spawned inside the universities. So they shut it down. Look what happened. Put that first picture up there if you can. Sister Juanita, this is Kyle. What's Kyle Auditorium? You know Kyle Auditorium? That's, that's Kyle Field. That's in, that's in College Station. This is going on two days ago. After they shut it down, that's Kyle. You know where Kyle's field? That's them right there. Right now, there are, there are thousands of people outside of the field waiting for them to open up the field so they can go worship inside the field, but they're outside the field. Thousands of them worshiping right now, 24-7. Those are thousands of them right there. You Google it, you'll see it. This is what's going on. Now they're, go to the next one as a headline. Okay, there we go right there. That's, a, that's another university. I'm going to show you. Go to the next one. These are all different universities that are now three different universities that now have revivals taking place inside the schools. Are you seeing what's going on here? Go to the next one. There we go. Look at it. Universities nationwide experiencing a spirit of unity and confession spurred by Asbury Revival. Next one. Similar revivals have emerged at schools like, these are other universities. Look, University of Hawaii, uh, Samford University in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee, Belmont University in Nashville, according to the Washington Post. All these universities, all these universities, we're seeing a revival. Go to the next one. He says, for about a decade, watch this. It involved mainstream Protestants. I want to talk about this right here. Protestants and Roman Catholics who testified to having supernatural experience. Similar to these recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, especially in speaking in tongues. You see that Roman Catholics and Protestants. This was a great awakening that took place in the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic Church praying in the Holy Ghost, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. In the Catholic Church. If it can happen inside the Catholic Church. And I'm going to share that story. That's the last picture we have, have, right? The last slide I have. What's that? Oh, I have a video. Hang on to that video. So, I was a little boy. I shared this on, online. If you saw it, you'll hear the story again. I'm a little boy, and my, my daddy told, uh, told my brother and I, I was about 11. He was 13 or 12. Or 13, two-year difference. And he said, come on, let's go exercise. We went for a walk. We lived in San Benito on Reagan Street. We went down, uh, uh, down street, a block away, Queen of the Universe, uh, a Catholic Church uh, was right there. And we walked right up to the front door, and he tried the door to open it up. And, uh, and, and if, if you knew us, you know, we, we, you know the, the, the title of the church didn't, doesn't mean anything. It's a church, right? There's, and even in the book of Revelation, Jesus has seven churches, okay? So they have seven, and they're not all perfect, but they're all his. Are you hearing that? Seven churches. He rebukes some of the churches. They're not all perfect, but they're all his. That's what I like about that. Okay? So, so we went to the Catholic church, and when he reached for the handle, we figured he, would, he wanted to pray. But the door was locked, so he prayed. And he started praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, that these doors open up and that people will, will come and they'll get fed. And, they'll, and he, he just prayed. I'm just a little boy listening, just standing in agreement with him. And then we went walking following day. Come on, let's go for a walk. We go for a walk again. Went right back to the church. Door was closed. Prayed again. Third door. Door was open. Walked in. We start praying on the pews up there. The priest talks to my dad. The priest asked my dad to come back to a CYO meeting, Catholic Youth Organization meeting. It's like the youth service. And asked him, he says, will you, will you talk to them? I said, sure. So he comes. I I'll never forget. It was like a little hallway. Not a very big church. It was a little hallway. And my father, who was you know, Catholic, like all of us Latinos are born Catholic, you know. It's like, I don't know if you came out with a rosary or something, but for whatever reason, all Latinos are Catholic, you know. <laughs> so that's how, that's how we were Catholic. I took First Communion, Catholic. My daddy didn't come because he thought if he walked into the Catholic church, he was so bad, he thought he would explode so he wouldn't go in there. Did not see my First Communion. <laughs> but, but here he was now, saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wasn't a preacher. 
He was preaching, but he wasn't a preacher. He was a cookie salesman. And, and he's going to the church, and they asked him to come preach. So he goes, okay, I'm going to go preach. So he went over there and just gave his testimony about him being a, a street thug in New York City, and he got saved, and how the Lord healed him, and got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you can get baptized too. And he started laying a hand on the kids, and half of them fell out in the Holy Ghost, and the other half started praying in the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, he thought he was going to get in trouble. And so the priest said, will you come back? He said, sure. The following week, my dad goes back over there, preaches again. Another group of kids in there get baptized in the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues. And then they said, well, you go to this other Catholic church in San Benito. He went over there, prayed over there, the CYO, and they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. This was not happening by the priest on Sunday morning with the sacraments inside the main chapel, this was on the side. Then all these revivals, little by little, he was being brought to all these different Catholic churches just to minister because there was a, an awakening that was taking place in the Catholic churches. This is the, back in the 70s. There's a saint that I'm interviewing that comes to this church named Janie Rivera. Do you all know Janie Rivera? She's been coming here since the beginning of time. I think she was probably here before the building was. <laughs> But I'm going to interview her because Janie, when I stood up here for the first time and I looked out in the audience, and saw, I saw Sister Janie there. I said, oh, my God, because Janie was in one of the meetings when it blew up at the CYO because she was a Catholic at the time. And Janie shares that story with me all the time. I have another video that she did at the church in Harlingen where she talked about, man, he would come in there and preach and the people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. The kids, not inside the big chapel. Until finally, this thing blew up to where 1980, in 1980, my father was invited to speak in San Antonio at the Hemisphere Arena where they had their diocese meeting and they would have a CYO meeting there. Thousands of kids, Hemisphere Arena, for those of you who are millennials that don't know, before there was an Alamo Dome, there was a Hemisphere Arena, okay? And the arena was there, 18,000 seats, and my father went in there and he was a guest speaker on 1980 for the Catholic diocese meeting for CYO. The following year, they said, will you be the MC? 1981, I'm about 15 years old, and I go for the first time with him, and I see this big old room. I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? And my dad, at the end of the evening, he was, he was a master of ceremony for all these priests, and you had all these nuns, if you can picture this, nuns with their habits on, running around like crazy people under the power of the Holy Ghost all over that place, priests falling out in the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't just him. There were other priests that were preaching, and they were laying hands on the sick, and it was a movement. And that's what that page is from Wikipedia. Put that page back on there. That's what that page is, is that the Catholic Church during that whole generation, Roman Catholic churches had seen a renewal called the Charismatic Movement that started in 1969. We just happened to show up in 1978 to a church that was receptive to say, we're waiting for this revival to show up here. And for three years after that, 1981, 82, 83, they, were, they had what was called the Jesus Conference from the Catholic Church, the Hemisphere Arena that my father would emcee for them. It was Master of Ceremonies, and they were all day events for three days in a row. Powerful, powerful moves of God. See, the Holy Ghost works through the people through you. You're the one. You're the one that will spawn revival. The kids in the university will spawn revival. All of them will spawn revival. If you're expecting a pastor, and pastors, if you're listening to me online and you think that you got to work real hard to do it, forget it. Just set the table and let the people do what they're going to do. God will put it inside them. Tuesday night service that we have here with Pastor James Keller, He's been doing this for 10, 11, 12 years. There's some people that remember him doing He was in a garage when I met him. And I found out he was in a garage just looking for a church because he had been driven out of other churches because these meetings, they didn't know how to do I don't know all the politics that took place from it. I said, well, well, I'd like to meet this man. I like meeting troublemakers in the kingdom of God. <laughs> I love meeting troublemakers in the kingdom of God. I said, I want to meet this guy. What, what you got? In Don at the Catholic Church, and you got scared. 
and you ran smack dab in the middle of it. <laughs> you didn't know what was going on. You got baptized in the Holy Ghost at FPG? Where'd you get baptized in the Holy Ghost with? Where? At FPG? Ryan Harbunk, uh no, uh, Rodney Howard Brown? Who? I don't know. Norval Hayes. With Norval Hayes? They're at the church? Oh, yeah. Maybe you'll want it. <laughs> Norval Hayes was a character. How many of anybody here know who Norval Hayes is? Yeah, he's gone home to be with the Lord already. But Norval Hayes is one of those guys who preached like this. And you never knew that he was talking with fire. And he just said, you want the Holy Ghost? I don't have time to lay hands on everybody. Just take it. <laughs> just take it. <laughs> and if you took it, you took it. If you didn't, you did it. And that's how you got it. Wow. How far away was he? How far away was he from you? So about 30 feet? About 30 feet away and you got baptized in the Holy Ghost? The preacher didn't have to lay hands on you, huh? He didn't have to throw a rag at you. He didn't have to douse you with oil. He didn't have to ask any devils to leave. No, you just got it 30 feet away from the preacher, and he just said, take it, and you took it. And your son, and your son's a preacher now, and ministering the gospel. People of God, that's, that's how the Holy Ghost works. And you can live in this stuff. Don't ever get out of it. And when you're in it, stay in it. And if you get stale, just pray in the Holy Ghost. That's all you have to do, just pray in the Holy Ghost. You get stale, just start praying in the Holy Ghost. It turns right back on. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It just, it just blows that... It fans that revival, that fire to make sure. And you say, well, I'm praying the Holy Ghost, but I don't feel anything. Well, just keep praying. Don't stop. Keep praying. Oh, but I don't feel it. Just keep going. You, you just hang in there. Have faith. You watch what happens. Eventually, you become less and he becomes more. And if you say, I don't believe any of this stuff, I dare you to give it a try. I put on Facebook. Did y'all see my Facebook on how to hear God or how to, how to get before God? Did you see that? I, here was, I gave, I gave instructions. Number one, turn off all electronics. Well, that right there made everybody freak out. Oh my God, turn off electronics. What are you talking about? No electronics. I said, number one, turn off all electronics. And then I said, number two, get inside your, get inside your bedroom and lock the door. Lock the door. Number three, find the very back furthest corner of your closet. Of your closet. Clear it out. And then number four, put your face down in there and pray. And number five, don't leave till you hear something. Oh, that's right. I did. I was, I was being kind. I said, I said, stop. Now when you get down there, now shut up and listen. That's right. Shut up and listen. It did go over good. I got a couple of calls. My mama was one of them. So, honey, what are you doing? I said, I'm starting fights. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't start any fights. All those things are good. It's true. Shut up. I'm telling you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Guys, listen. This is, this is nowhere a rebuke at all. This is the way revival. I just, my responsibility is to set the table. I put the plates out there. I put the forks and the knives. I get the cups. But the Holy Spirit's got to bring the meat. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit's got to bring the food. I serve you. Huh. You don't want that food. He serves you. You don't want to stop eating it. My friends, that's what's going on over here with revival. Revival will happen when the people decide, I will, I will be in revival and I won't stop. You get on your face and revival will happen. Amen? Now, this, Saturday, this Sunday, we have Super Sunday. And Super Sunday, we're going to have some good food. Okay, that one, this, this gentleman right here is going to be cooking that, that barbecue this Sunday. And uh, how many of y'all like Super Sundays? Y'all like Super Sundays? I love them. They're so good. So, and you blessed us with the candy. She blessed us with the candy, the, the cotton candy. Oh, my God. And my wife kind of ruined it for me. She told everybody, don't let pastor get online twice. That's what she said, which is pretty good. Don't let him get online twice. 
I know, you did very good. I stayed away from there because I don't want my wife rebuking me in public. <laughs> no. Uh, so this Sunday, on Super Sunday, we have this gentleman named uh, Joe and Becky Cruz, a couple. Joe and Becky Cruz. These two are such, it's so anointed. They're just, they're just anointed. And uh, they, he's got that voice that I want that I wish I had. And I have a little video I want you to hear. It's only two and a half minutes long. But I want you to hear this. Go and turn up the volume. Make sure it's nice and loud. Is the volume on? Mac, turn on Mac. And put that volume on loud because it, it won't do it justice if it's low. See the... This room. Here we go. Your presence can be found. As the idols of our soul come crashing down, hearts are open by your holy will. As the praises of God's people ascend, so we. ready for that Sunday? Sunday morning, whole service. We're going to do worship. Our worship team will be up there. I'm going to come up. I'm going to exhort everybody, talk to everybody, uh, share, share just a little bit, and uh, then we're going to pull them up and have, let them have their way. And then we're going to bless them with an offering. And we're going to believe that God is going to, going to multiply in this house more hungry people. Amen? We're going to see the hand of God move. This house was built, I, I, I went through, and I'm going to wrap with this one statement. This house was built in its, in its writings, this organization. Trinity Worship Center was its name. Good Shepherd was the organization that before. Then, then, then they, Good Shepherd closed the door to Trinity Worship people. Right, and then uh, Haspany came here, and they, and this thousand man church. I've never seen a church start with a thousand people. And I have a video that's online. You can listen to it. Where I did a whole dive. I interviewed everybody that was here from the founders. And I was in Harlingen when all this happened. But there was a statement that's made, and the statement is that this will be a house where. 
people can gather together and worship God freely. There's no reservation. And then there was an article that came out, 1999. An article that came out that the Valley Morning Star printed when a revival had hit. Revival hit in the Valley, 1985, 86, 87. The joy hit the Rio Grande Valley, not 87, 1995, 96, 97. Joy hit the valley, and, uh, and this church had experienced it too. And then 88, 98, 99, this place was popping, packed, packed to the rim. And, uh, and it came out in the newspaper that the Highway 281 and that God was going to do something. I have the article in my desk. Do you want to see it? I'll show it to you. I showed it to everybody when I talked about it. And, uh, and inside the article, they, they interviewed the pastor, and the pastor said, this is a place where people can come, and they can drink from, from heaven. They can come and worship God. And this house was built with the intentions, not like any other church. This house was built so that way there could be a move of God, that, that the people can move. And that's why I went through the whole study in front of the congregation on Sunday mornings on how this church started for you to understand this is your heritage and this is where we're going because this is the command that was placed on this and I don't care who's come and gone and who came with their own opinions and agendas that's not here what's here is the purpose of why this place was here and the place was here so that way you the people of the city of Far, McAllen, San Juan, Edinburgh can have a place that they can worship God and I find it amazing, here I am, who had a church that we never locked our doors. The church, when my wife and I were pastoring, when we started the church, all the way up to 2005, the church never locked its doors. It was open 24-7 with church services going on. And I said, Lord, that's all I want to do is I want worship here. That's all I want. I just want you to worship. I don't want to force it. I don't want to come over here and say, okay, come on, worship team. No, it's going to come from the people. And so people call me in the middle of the service, in the middle of the weekday, and they say, Pastor, can we pray in the sanctuary? I will come running. And I open the door. That's, that's the altar I put together right there with the padding and a saint of the church said they, they found out I'm over here praying on these pews. And they said, Pastor needs padding. And, and they bless us with all the padding. And I thought they were only going to pad that. They padded everything. And somebody says, oh, you mean you only pray? No, I pray everywhere, but that's my place. That, that's what I call it. So open heaven. Everywhere I go, one day I'll, I'll talk about open heaven. There's places in your house. You need to have a meeting place called tabernacles. The Bible calls them tabernacles. Tabernacles, with, tabernacles are meeting places with God. This is where you meet with God. That's what tabernacles are. And you have to have a tabernacle before God. This is why God had them build altars. They crossed the River Jordan, build an altar. They entered into the Promised Land, build an altar. They entered in this, but build an altar. They slaughtered all these people, build an altar. Because they had to tell the story. And anybody that goes over there and they lay hands on that thing, they get an anointing in their life. It pours on you. But the whole building has that. And you can pick your spot. You pick your spot. The Catholic Church organized it. That's what they did. They, all they did is they organized it. Just because they do this doesn't mean that it was wrong because it's put in the word. They just put it under organization. I don't want no organization. I want you to do as God guides you. Amen? And this is your house. I'm just the one that makes sure that the doors are open, the floors are clean, the lights are on, and, and, and you can come in here and worship God freely. And you don't break anything and nobody steals anything. Amen? Is that okay? Hallelujah. All 16 cameras working. Yeah, make sure that we're monitoring. And all my angels are on staff. And they're overloaded with work. Amen? You guys blessed? Amen. Well, praise the Lord.